Good morning and welcome to this daily devotional today. We continue our study through the book of Acts and we are going to see some people who are pursuing God's heart. They're trying to do God's will and God is going to bless them and use them mightily for his purposes. Um, we got a lot to study today and I'm excited about what we have to study. So before we begin, let's have, first have a time of prayer to make sure our hearts are right and that uh, we have a time of confession as well. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just... We lift up our hearts to you. We want to be used by you. We want to see the world changed. We are so blessed that, uh, that we have this relationship with you and we long that all people everywhere may love you just as we do. Lord, we pray um, in this time of confession, we lift up our sins and our failings to you and we confess them to you now. Lord, we praise you that you are holy and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Lord, we pray that you'd open our eyes and our hearts to what you have to say to us this morning. I praise you and thank you for all the people who are uh, joining with us to watch this. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So good to, good to have you aboard. Um, we're picking up in Acts chapter 11, starting in verse 19. Uh, they have, Peter has just preached the gospel to the Gentiles, seen them get saved, and went back to Jerusalem to defend what he had done, uh, because they were not so sure that he should have done that. But now we're going to see, picking up in verse 19, Now those who had been scattered as a result of the persecution that started because of Stephen uh, made their way as far as Phoenicia. Cyprus and Antioch, speaking the word to no one except for the Jews. So these people who have been scattered before uh, this whole conversation happened, uh, we're still just preaching to the Jews. Uh, but, in verse 20, but there were some of them, men from Cyprus and Cyrene, who came to Antioch and began speaking to the Greeks also, proclaiming the good news about the Lord Jesus the Lord's hand was with them, and a large number who believed uh, turned to the Lord. News about them reached the church in Jerusalem, and they sent out Barnabas to travel as far as Antioch. When he arrived and saw the grace of God, he was glad and encouraged all of them to remain true to the Lord with devoted hearts. For he was a, man, a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and faith, and large numbers of people were added to the Lord. Then he went to Tarsus. Uh, and to search out for Saul. And when he found him, he brought him to Antioch. For a whole year they met with the church and taught large numbers. The disciples were first called Christians at Antioch. In those days, some prophets came down from Jerusalem to Antioch. One of them named Agabus uh, stood up and predicted by the Spirit that there would be a severe famine throughout the Roman world. This took place during the, uh, the reign of Claudius. Each of the disciples, according to his ability, determined to send relief to the brothers and sisters who lived in Judea. They did this, sending it uh, to the elders by means of Barnabas and Saul. So, in this passage, we see uh, people who we don't even have names for. Uh, previously, we saw how God kind of revealed to Peter that he was supposed to preach the gospel to the Gentiles, and uh, the church in Jerusalem uh, saw God's mighty hand in this. But here we're going to see just some uh, men from Cyprus and Cyrene who came to Antioch. And they began preaching to the Greeks as well, and many of them became followers of Jesus. So, they didn't know that they were allowed to do this yet. Um, they didn't know that this was okay. But somehow God communicated to them that it was and that they should do that. And they did. And so, 
So often we look to big names, we look to big people to do big things, and yet God often uses small people in small places to do great things as well. And I think that's one of the big things that we need to just wrap our heads around is that uh, God often uses even people like us, right? Uh, it's not just the people who have radio shows and those who uh, write lots of books, but rather it is us being obedient and faithful where we are. God has put people in your life, in my life, that God hasn't put in other people's lives. It's our responsibility to take the gospel to them, and we all need to be faithful to that. And God may just take you someplace crazy. God may do something pretty amazing through you. All we have to do is be obedient and faithful. So some preached the gospel to only the Jews, and some began speaking to the Gentiles as well. And this was the heart of Jesus, right? What, what was his command? Go and make disciples of all nations. All nations, not just the Jewish nation. And so uh, these men who, who took to heart what Jesus had called them to do were taking the gospel to all nations. And God, it says that God's hand was with them. Uh, so the verse 21, the Lord's hand was with them and a large number who believed turned to the Lord. How do we know if God's hand is in something? People are repenting of their sin and becoming, uh, turning back to God. That's something that Satan doesn't really fake. Uh, and then additionally to that, um, just obedience and, and unity of the Spirit are also marks of the work of the Holy Spirit as well. So unity, um, salvations, and people repenting of sin and turning away from it. That, those are movements that are generally uh, pretty safe to say that they are movements of God. Uh, why would Satan want to fake uh, the very thing that he's trying to fight against? There are a lot of other things that may look like works of God, but aren't necessarily. Large crowds are not necessarily marks of the Holy Spirit. Um, someone getting a big platform or selling lots of books or uh, even people getting very emotional are not necessarily works of the Holy Spirit, but rather people's lives being changed. They're repenting. They are uh, actually changing, right? Not just during the service where they're getting hyped up and amped up and they're crying and rolling around on the floor, but rather the next morning when they go back to work. Is their life truly changed or did they just have a really cool worship experience or a, a musical experience or some sort of other experience? It is important for us to recognize the work of the Holy Spirit is orderly and is consistent with the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, and self-control. Uh, oftentimes, the work of God looks rather boring, right? It's, it's often more noticed once you step out of the work of the Holy Spirit, and then you step back into it, uh, having seen what everywhere else looks like, you you will notice it more. The sweet spirit, the calm demeanor, the uh, reasoning, the uh, study of the Word of God, sometimes it looks boring, but yet are people's lives truly being changed, or uh, is this just a, just a, a club? And uh, we, we need to be careful not to attribute false things to the Holy Spirit, but also not to uh, discount or ignore when the Holy Spirit is truly changing lives. When you start seeing people being baptized and you start seeing people um, truly have their hearts changed, don't ever poo-poo that. That is big stuff. Um, so... 
Also, we see here that uh, the gospel's going forth. So the uh, apostles, do they just say, well, then things are going great. Let's just let it be. No, they, uh, they send Barnabas uh, to help things along. He is a faithful man. We see that he, he's useful and for the work, but he's also discerning. Um, they, uh, they naturally want to make sure that what's going on there is uh, biblical. And it's important for, for us to be excited about what the Lord's doing and be a part of what God is doing, but also to be careful that we're not going beyond Scripture, that we're not uh, promoting false theologies, that we're not uh, allowing things to go uh, crazy off the rails just because it's exciting. And there's, there's the tendency to do that, and I think it's important. Um, they thought it was important to send somebody who was qualified to kind of just make sure things were staying biblical. And so they send Barnabas, and later he's going to go grab Saul, uh, who is known as Paul, and they're going to together work in the Church of Antioch to make sure that things are biblical, but then also that the gospel is going forth, not just to Jews, but also to all people all over. So they saw the work of God, and they chose to enter into the work of God and to participate in what God was doing. And this is, this is a good thing for us to do as well. When you see God at work somewhere, as uh, Henry Blackaby puts it so eloquently, when you see God at work, that is your invitation to join with him in that work. And we see that here. There's The work of God is, is happening Barnabas sees, this is where I need to be because God's at work here and I want to be a part of what God's doing. And he, uh, he goes and grabs Saul and says, you need to come over and here and help as well. We see Barnabas has this heart for supporting and encouraging, but also to, uh, to bring in uh, someone who is on the outskirts. Paul is, uh, he's kind of the black sheep. He's not... not uh, not the first person that they consult for this type of thing. And yet he realizes that Saul would be useful to this. He recalls Saul's commissioning and his calling to be a, an apostle to the Gentiles. And so this seems like just the thing. Take him to a place where lots of Gentiles are getting saved. Also, uh, Paul has experience uh, in the Greek uh, uh, with Greeks and um, is 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 from that area loosely, and so naturally he goes out and finds him. Now this is the church that's going to eventually send both Barnabas and Saul or Paul on their missionary journey, and this is this is the lead up to that. When we enter into what God is doing, don't be surprised if God sends you further than what you ever expected. But also we see at the end here that as the gospel came, so did their concern for the poor and for, for helping others. Uh, they, they get this prophecy that, that there is going to be a famine throughout the, the, the Roman world. And they, they not only hear that uh, to take precautions for themselves, but they grow immediately concerned for the believers in Jerusalem from where the gospel came to them. And they feel a obligation and a, a joy to give to support them. And so that's what they do. Um, they take up a collection and send it by the hands of Barnabas and Saul to Jerusalem. Uh, not only as a alleviation for uh, those who are going to be suffering, but also for uh, those who had uh, sent the gospel to Antioch. And that is how they were saved. They, they realized that they are where uh, the gospel came from to them. All right, well, let's have a time. Of, uh, let's close up with prayer and then get you to do what uh, God has called you to do for today. Lord God, I pray that you bless each person watching this video, that you fill them with your Holy Spirit today, 
that we would not despise your works that often are slow and, and, and dribbling like rain upon us. Lord, help us to not miss the great and wondrous things you are doing in us and in those around us. Lord, help us to recognize those things. But Lord, also help us not to fight against or to, uh, to not be a part of what you're doing. Help us to be a part of things and, and, and to rejoice at your, your transformation of us and others. Lord, I pray all these things in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Thanks so much for watching and joining us today. There's some Bible studies right here on the screen. You can check those out over there. Otherwise, I'll see you later. God bless you all.